Hello, we are going to get all of our Microsoft 365 user profile data today. And in my opinion, one of the really interesting ways to use this is for row level security in Power BI. So if you are a Power BI user looking for a way to dynamically filter your reports based on the management hierarchy, this is a great way to do that, assuming you don't have a better source of information for the record of who reports to who. But you can also use this to report on your external users in your tenant. So cleaning up those accounts, making sure that your data matches up between Microsoft 365 and wherever that data is coming from. For example, making sure your departments are the same, your managers are the same, that kind of thing. Um, this could be really useful for that too. Um, I'm going to create a new schedule cloud flow in Power Automate. And I'm going to have this repeat once a day. You could also do once a week, once a month, just depends on how often you need to get this information and how large your environment is. So if you've got 50,000 users, maybe you don't want to run this every day. And the first thing we're going to do is initialize a variable. This is going to store our information as we are looping through and getting things. I'm just going to call this users and we're going to make it an array. And then I'm going to add the step that gets the user profile information. And the thing about this action is that it has all of the basic profile info, but it does not have the manager. So we're going to need to take some extra steps to get the manager information because we need that for our row level security. So funny story, the trick for using this action to get all user profiles is you just don't put in a search term. If you don't put in a search term, it is going to get all of your user profiles. And I can set this to no so that it's not required. And then if we go into settings, um, the, the default, I believe, for the get actions is returning 100 items. So if you have more than 100 users in your environment, which you probably do, particularly if you have external users, you need to turn pagination on and then set your threshold to above whatever you think the maximum number of users will be. So I can set this to a thousand for my environment. I don't have very many users, so it's not um, actually not going to hit it without this, but that is something to look out for. So when you're running this action, if you find that it's returning a completely even number of users, you probably need to increase your threshold. So that gets the basic profile information like the username, the department, the job title, but we need to get the manager. So next we're going to do an apply to each loop that's under the control category. And we are going to apply to each of the values from our get user profile step. So for each of those records, we are going to get manager. Oops, spelled manager wrong. Manager. V2. And the thing to keep in mind with this get manager step is that it is going to fail for users that do not have a manager and that will cause your flow to fail. So we need to build in some handling of that. And you'll see this most often with your external users. So external users don't have a manager. However, um, if you're not filling in the Microsoft 365 profiles, systematically, um, this could happen for normal users too. For the UPN, you just find the UPN from the search step here, this one. And then first we're going to add our action for what happens when this get manager step succeeds. So for that, we're going to do append to an array variable. And make sure that your step up here for initializing that variable was of the type array. I'm not sure if I mentioned that or not. So we're going to select our variable down here. And for the value, we're going to enter our own code in here. So we're going to do a curly bracket and we're going to go down a line. And then we're going to put in the fields that we want to use from our user profile data. So you don't have to use exactly what I'm using here. You can choose from the cards up here which of the things you want to pull in. Just follow the same format that I'm using. So we're going to do user ID and then a colon, and these all need to be surrounded by double quotes, another double quotes, and then we're going to find the ID from our get users step. So make sure not to use anything from this get manager step yet. It looks exactly the same as the information from the search for users. So we, we want to use the information from the, from the search for users for this part. So I want the user ID 
in double quotes, and then a comma, go down a line, and I want their UPN. And the UPN is the username of the individual that is logged into Microsoft 365. And this is going to be what's useful for the row level security in Power BI, because we can use that in our Power BI reports to filter based on information about the currently logged in user. Put that in double quotes, comma. We can throw their display name in here if we want that. And this is where you can pull in the department and job title too, if you want to. I'm just going to do department. And as far as other things in here, there's also office location, zip code, phone number, and whether or not their account is enabled. So this one might be um, good to, so this one might be good to use, um, particularly if you're trying to do user cleanup activity. And for the last one here, we're going to get the manager UPN. So that was the one that we got from our get manager step. So I'm going to call this manager UPN. And I'm going to pull in from the other section. So this is going to be under the get manager section here. Their UPN. So we're combining data from those two get actions. And this needs to be in double quotes. And then close our curly brackets. And I'm going to rename this step to as manager, because this is only going to run if the get manager action succeeds, because that's the default behavior. So if I go to the configure run after in here, this is going to run after get manager is successful, and that's the default behavior. So what we need to do is add a parallel branch here to handle what happens if this get manager step fails. So for users who don't have a manager. So I'm going to click on the little plus icon between these two steps and click on add a parallel branch. And then we're going to add the same action here, but we're going to have a different value for it. So I'm going to look for append. So append to array variable, and we're going to select our users variable. And for the value, I'm going to copy what I did over here and paste it and then modify that so that I don't have to retype it all. So primarily what we need to remove here is the manager UPN. So this manager UPN is not going to exist if this um, prior step fails. So we're going to take that out and just leave the double quotes in there. So that'll make that field blank. And then we need to configure the run after for this. So go to the ellipses menu and go to configure run after. And we're going to change this from is successful to virtually everything else. So is failed, is skipped, has timed out. So if the get manager step does not succeed, then it's going to set the variable to this value instead of this value. And then after our apply to each loop, so at the bottom here, we're going to add a compose step. What the compose step does is it makes our variable that was appended to in that loop accessible to the actions that create files. For whatever reason, it doesn't show up in the list to use oftentimes unless you compose it first. So for the input, we're just going to put our variable in there, so our user's variable. And what I've found with this compose step is if the get manager fails, it flags the entire apply to each loop as having failed. So what we need to do is configure the run after for this compose step. So ellipses menu, configure run after, and we need to run it in all cases because that loop gets flagged as failing, even if it's got a run after step that succeeds for reasons. So we're going to click on done there and then choose how you want your data to be structured. So if you want it in a JSON file, all you have to do is a create file step and just name it whatever.json and drop this compose variable in there. Since that's the way that I normally do it, I'm going to do something different this time and put it in a CSV just in case that's useful to anyone. So um, instead of the JSON file, we're going to create a CSV table. So we're going to add a new step and look for create CSV table here. And we're just going to drop our compose step in there. And the compose step is mostly for if you're going directly to a JSON file, it looks like the um, the variable is accessible to the create CSV step. So you don't necessarily need it if you are making a CSV file, but I'm going to include that in there anyways. And then we're going to use that to create file in SharePoint. And we're creating the file in SharePoint so that we can connect directly to it in Power BI and schedule refresh on it so that our user profile data is automatically updating. Our Power BI data set is automatically updating based on that file. So I'm going to choose my site. 
and my folder and then name the file. So I'm going to call this users.csv. And then for our file content, we're going to use our output of the create CSV table step. And if you wanted to create a JSON file, you would just have this be .json instead and drop in your compose step in the file content. And then the other thing we need to do here is go into the ellipses menu and go to settings. And we need to turn off allow chunking. This is going to make it so that when our flow runs on a schedule, it can overwrite that file. We want it to be able to overwrite. All right, so I'm going to save this and test it. And it succeeded. So you can see in this apply to each loop what happens is this get manager step failed for the first user because the first user was an external user. So instead, it appended the information to an array variable and left the manager blank. And if I go to the next user, I have like all of five test users and only like two of them have managers. So Linda has department sales and her manager is me. If we go look at our create CSV step here, it looks like it's successfully creating the CSV. So I'm going to go look at this file in our SharePoint site real quick here. All right, so here's our file. I can click on it to open it. And what you'll notice here is that the UPN for our external users has a hashtag EXT in the UPN. So that's how you can identify which users are external and which are not. And the way that I like to connect to this data is to download a copy, connect to it locally, and then change the path to SharePoint for that file. That way I don't have to use the folder connector because that creates a lot of unnecessary baggage. So I'm going to link the video on how to do that in the description. I'll also try and put in a card on the screen. We'll see if that works. And we're going to use this in a later video to set up our dynamic row level security. That's everything I have for you today. And thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.